All right. So thank you guys for all coming out. Um, I'm Drew, and I'm going to be introducing you guys to CTF's virtual edition. Uh, so you might be wondering what they are. It's not your common <laughs> physical CTF. We're not grabbing flags, shooting guns, people, paintballs, such like that. Uh, we're actually attacking each other's systems, or the, the main system, if it's a, a Jeopardy style, which I'll go into later. Um, so, basically it's going to comprise of multiple services or challenges that are put together for you to uh, go out and practice your security skills. Um, that means vulnerab vulnerability discovery, uh, and then you're going to want to write exploitations or just simple solving skills, practical thinking, will be all um, developed and mastered doing these competitions. Uh, you also get to think like a hacker, which I know we've talked about a bunch of times where don't do this, don't do that. This is almost, almost free reign. There's certain rules that you do have to abide by uh, that we will be mentioning when we're doing the specific CTFs. But this is like 90% just touch it with a stick, poke it, do whatever you want, prod it, like, and, see what happens when you, when you hit it. What's the result? Is anything interesting pop out? Is there a clue here? Is there a, uh, uh, do I keep going this way? Do I keep going that way? So, oh, skipped one. Uh, so the idea is to get, grab flags and they're gonna be points for you. Um, in a virtual CTF, a flag will look like one of these two probably down here. The uh, inside here will be some sort of MD5 hash most likely. Uh, if it's, <laughs> If it's, yeah, the bottom one's not an MD5 patch. I just kind of typed it in because uh, that's why I wanted to make sure that. Um, but yeah, so if it's not in that format, usually they'll let you know because you're looking at a system and you have no idea what is this flag. Like, what, what is it? Is it this file? Is it, um, is it a string? Is it numbers? So this uh, will tell you what you submit to the, uh, the service to get points, which is needed because you want to get points, obviously. Climb the scoreboard. Um, so who participates in these? Uh, they have range you know, from high school students all the way up to people who are employed uh, in the industry uh, doing these CTFs. If you can like, get first place in these, that's a big deal. Um, it's very notable. To, you can put it on your resume. You'll, you'll get a good job at a, a great company if you're uh, competing in these and you're doing very well in them. So, you know, if you want to get into the uh, uh, security job for summer, putting a CTF and the specific challenges you've completed on that resume will definitely give you an edge up on other people. Uh, so there's two parts really to uh, CTF. You're kind of looking for the vulnerability at the beginning. You are given the prompt and you want to find out using all the information possible, where do I look for this little flag? How do I get it? Obviously, there's a million different ways you can try and get to it. Um, some are more efficient than the others. So reading the prompt and examining that for clues is, is very crucial. Uh, you might think, this is stupid. It's a one line. There's, there's no way this has any information for me. And usually that, that points to something. So keep in mind there's always a clue there. Don't, um, like a, like a computer, don't think that they did it wrong. They, they probably did it right, and uh, they're just not looking in the right area. Um, so after looking through the prompt, make sure you know what category you're in. So there's gonna be multiple categories, like web, forensics, uh, networks, and these will all indicate what type of vulnerabilities might be uh, apparent in this, this system that you're looking at. Um, and so keep that in mind. And if you don't know where to start, Googling is your friend. You, you can look up what this means, uh, and that will tell you where to go next. Uh, so never just sit there with your, your hands up being like, I don't know where to begin, because Googling the prompt will possibly give you some sort of clues as well. Uh, and then once you have an idea of what you're gonna be doing, uh, there's specific tools out there that you can utilize to improve your probability of getting the flag. Um, we'll go into those a little bit later. So once you, understand what possible vulnerabilities there are, um, you're gonna go ahead and try and obviously exploit that. You're gonna need to write that code or you're gonna need to solve that specific problem. Um, it's, uh, you know, if it doesn't work, you might just have to try a different route. You might be in the wrong area. You might be trying the wrong thing. This isn't an actual exploit. 
or you might just be off by a little bit. You don't know this, this obstacle that's, that's coming up, that uh, you're only allowed 20 input to, uh, characters and it's not echoing out that you have uh, over exceeded that limit and it's just a silent error. So sometimes you might have the right exploit, but it's just slightly off and you need to condense it or uh, shift it a little bit so that you actually pop the system and get the flag. Um, but if it works, you know, you gotta celebrate, uh, count, your, count your wins. Because they're, they're hard, CTFs can be hard, they're challenging. Um, so take pride in your accomplishments of these, as I was saying. Uh, and then move on, you know, get to a new, harder challenge. So this is from an actual CTF that happened uh, this weekend. Um, this one is like, uh, miscellaneous is the category, the name is sanity check. And so ideally you want to understand, maybe does that give you any hints? Probably not. I mean, that, that probably doesn't mean much. But then you look at, are you alive? Hmm, that's kind of curious. What, what's going on there? And then you look at this big string of text. What, what could that possibly be? Um, some of you might have noticed some things about it that indicate something or other and, and a way to go, af go ahead and try out uh, your, your hypothesis on whether you can exploit it. And so what I want you to notice is look at the end of the string. So... What could it be? Well, there's, there's an equal sign at the end. And for those of us who know and learning, um, the equal sign could mean that it's possibly a base 64 encoded string. So uh, what do we want to go ahead and do? Well, we want to try our exploit now that we've uh, discerned that it, this is a possible, uh, not exploit, but this is a possible solution to the problem. That's what they're looking for is some sort of uh, decoding. And so as we uh, see by the uh, text on the screen that is really, really small. There's multiple uh, occurrences of decoding. So the first time you run it, you still get a big blob. <laughs> you have no idea what it is. This is where persistence is key. Um, many people will give up. You, you put it in once and you think that you're supposed to get the answer out. Many times it's not that easy. So, you know, you're gonna need to try again and try again. As, as you can see, there takes multiple, I think it was like 15 or maybe 20 uh, decodes. I think it was a little excessive on that note. Um, but so sometimes you just got to keep at it. Uh, and finally, as you get to the bottom, you can kind of read it for those of you in the front. Uh, it says, welcome to the jungle with threes for all E's and zeros. So sometimes they have fun with those. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's just, that's just an example problem that you could uh, incur in CTF. Uh, they get a lot harder. They also can be easier and they can be in different categories. So to prepare, uh, you can go ahead and look at one of these links. Uh, they're war games, um, which means they're very similar to CTFs and they have the, the problem sets the same, but the difference is, is that they, uh, they're up continually. So a CTF will only be running for a certain amount of time and uh, these war games will be running you know, every day. So you can go ahead and uh, SSH into them and, and try out this specific challenge. Uh, in Over the Wire, there's multiple different games. Uh, so you can try uh, web, you can try forensics, cryptography. Uh, so if you wanna like specialize in some sort of uh, area that you're interested in, uh, you can definitely push in that area. Hack the site is uh, web. And Pico CTF is a uh, CTF that was put on by Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, it's still up and running. It's the 2014 version. I'm not sure if they're putting out a 2015 version. They're not. They're not. That's words that's been spoken. Um, so you can go ahead and look at that and look at what a uh, CTF would look like. Uh, and also you can you know, check out books or articles. Just commonly uh, reading forums about security will help you understand the general concepts uh, that then help you apply to the specific problem set. Um, and also, reading the CTF, the, the write-ups from the year before will give you an idea of what the programmer's mindset is. So a write-up uh, is basically someone who solved it, uh, the problem from like the last year, and it has a guide for how they solved it. Uh, so, <laughs> as I'm saying, if, if you don't get the solution to that problem, doesn't mean the world's gonna end. Uh, there might be people out there who have wrote, written the solution to it, so you can get a guide into understanding their thinking 
and how they went about achieving that, uh, getting the flag, and you didn't, and so you can adjust the way you're gonna attack the next problem. Um, and so most of these write-ups will be found at that link at the bottom, uh, ctftime.org slash write-ups. Yeah, so Tom Sedison said don't give up. Let's win that light. Uh, so the two types, there's two main types. One is Jeopardy, uh, and the other is Attack Defense. Um, and so this, the Jeopardy board is kind of like what a, a CTF board would look like with the, the top line being the categories, uh, forensics, web, and whatnot. And so then you can um, progress down the easy ones to the harder ones uh, and you know, take your pick. Uh, solving all of them would be quite a, quite a feat. Uh, and then attack defense is when you have a server up and running and you are attacking each other's servers. So um, instead of you almost against the, uh, the computer, uh, you're also playing other teams uh, that are in the, in the CTF. And that means that there's reflection, and I'm gonna go into that in a few slides. Uh, but before that, we have a, a, another example problem, and this one's gonna come from the web. Uh, so the prompt, if you can read it, uh, I'll read it out loud because I don't know if you can see it all the way in the back. Just, uh, so I hope you were well insured because the 90s have sent us their best thing ever. Bright colors and comic sans. Uh, please end it before everyone dies due to internal bleedings. A little, a little bleak. Um, but uh, so if they're talking about end it, they might be uh, talking about um, gaining root access, some, some way of shutting it down. I'm, probably doesn't mean that they want you to DOS their site. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not what they want. So they provide you the link for you to then open up. And this all comes from this, uh, the write-up down here, the link at the bottom. Uh, so when you, <laughs> when, yeah. <laughs> when you get to this uh, link, you're gonna be presented with this awesome uh, webpage. Who doesn't wanna see this? Uh, so you're now going to want to do some recon, explore around the site, you know, check the links, uh, open up your web inspector, I'm not sure what it's on, on uh, PCs, but command option I for Macs. Um, and then so as you're exploring, you might find something like this. Uh, you know, it looks like there's some sort of input, you know, so you start getting ideas about uh, could you do uh, SQL injection? Is it like, are you allowed to send something in? Are they executing your code? Uh, what's, what's going on there? Yes, Max, what's up? Drew, what's SQL injection? Uh, SQL injection is when uh, your code is entered into a, you submit a query, uh, you submit input, excuse me, and that's put into your query, their query on their server side that they run to find uh, a row or some sort of information that then they are most likely to spit out back to you. And if you enter invalid parameters where they don't expect it, you end up closing their statement, uh, or you do something as one equals one, uh, this will uh, supply you with their, all of the records. Um, that's, that's a whole talk that we'll probably get into later this year, so stick around for that. Um, this particular one, although you might have thought, you know, we're gonna do some sort of SQL injection, it particularly, uh, this one actually happens to deal with the parameter up in the, the URL. It says page equals dot slash about dot page. Um, so who knows, what if, we, what if we try different pages? Like what's it gonna happen? Is it gonna spit out a 404? Is it, is it not found? Or maybe can we somehow traverse their directory? Maybe they don't have permissions on that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and try uh, dot dot slash and, and go back in directories to try and understand what their uh, local file setup looks like. And after trying that a bunch of times, you would find out that uh, their password file is available for you. <laughs> and so with the persistence, like I was talking about before, you would get back several directories to find etc slash password. Uh, now you're still with much more interesting information. So there's a lot of things you could try and use this for. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, spit out, I believe it was the, uh, the auto configuration. Let me move forward. The, uh, the patchy default configuration. And when you examine this file, 
at the bottom that says redirect match 403 flag.txt. Now that looks pretty interesting. Uh, flag.txt is usually uh, somewhere where you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and try and get a 403. Uh, for a 403, that means that you are trying to access something that the server does not allow. And so that line of code basically means if you attempt to access something that the server denies you, it's going to re redirect you to this page, which is flag.txt. So basically, what can't we access? Well, from that other page, going back here, uh, there's a lot of things uh, we could go ahead and, and try. You know, A lot of things might not be accessible to us. Uh, and when we do find one of those, it's going to spit us out the flag. So it'll redirect us to flag.txt. And there it says the 90s called, they want their design back. That's the flag. So you would then take that flag and submit it to the system, get your points, get higher on the scoreboard. Brag to your friends. Uh, the other style, attack defense. Um, that's going to be, you're going to have to get yourself usually up and running on a server. So you're going to have some hardware. It's a little more uh, uh, in depth <coughs> for setting up. It's not as much as just like logging into a CTF, uh, SSHing into their system or some sort of thing. This is actually going to require a lot of preparation. Um, but once you have that, uh, you're able to get into one of the most fun events there is. Uh, so attack defense, you are basically trying to keep your system up and running while exploiting other people's systems, which is quite challenging. Uh, so. You can defend yourself by monitoring traffic. You can set up a firewall uh, and you know, block certain packets that are malicious. You can also uh, uh, patch the specific um, source code if you find the source code on the uh, image that they give you. Sorry, I might need to back up. I might have skipped something for you guys. Uh, when, you're, when you set up the server, they're going to give you an image, and you're going to be able to have uh, a bunch of services running on your server that are vulnerable. So other teams can find these uh, holes in the source code and send you a bug. Like if it's a buffer overflow, it, you might be able to uh, pop a flag because you didn't check for that. Or th they didn't check for that in the source code. And you need to find that buffer overflow and correct it. Um, you could also block the packets that send you, you know, 45 A's in a row. Those are also, go ahead and drop those, because no one ever sends 45 A's as a valid input. Uh, and then on the, the other side, there's offense. So that's at the same time while you're looking at that code, you can find those exploits and use them on other people. When you find out there's the buffer overflow, you can go ahead and submit 45 A's to someone else. And if they haven't set up the, the correct uh, firewalls uh, and precautions, you pop them and get points. Um, so the kind of workflow you would see in Jeopardy is you're, you're selecting a problem. You're going to go ahead and try and figure out what the vulnerability is, uh, try and exploit it, adjust it, see what's happening uh, until you get success. And then you're going to go on to another problem. On the other hand, attack defense, you're going to have a bunch of things go on at once. So it's going to be quite hectic for the team that's, that's operating uh, the, the server. You're going to be probably having someone trying to keep the, uh, the, I, the firewall up to date. You're going to want to um, make sure that you are uh, monitoring the network traffic uh, using Wireshark to watch for all those malicious packets for uh, packets that pop your system. And when you find those, you can go ahead and use that, uh, deep, like understand the way that their packet was sent to you and how that information works on that system, your, your vulnerable system. And that way you can take their exploit and turn it into your exploit. Mm -hmm. Because you're basically redirecting their intelligence and <laughs> the, the way that they uh, figured out how to pop your system and send it to someone else so you can get points as well. So defense and offense are kind of together. Um, and so all these things are happening at the same time. So you need great communication, you need to uh, have and understanding what your role is and all of this stuff. Um, but it's, it's an awesome time, uh, let me tell you that. So uh, there's also a difference in the, the timing of a tech defense is probably seven hours. It's kind of a, a single day event. 
whereas the Jeopardy is multiple days. It's probably going to run for a full weekend. So um, either of these you can you know start and stop, uh, but uh, the Jeopardy is a little more casual. Um, the scoring system, uh, scoring in an attack defense. If you pop the other team's system first, you get more points. You're going to get bonus points. Then everyone else who pops that same system later on, they're going to get less and less points all the way down to zero. So it's a, you know, it's a race to pop that, that system. Um, whereas in Jeopardy, everyone who solves that, that challenge is going to get 50 points or 150 points or what, whatever it's worth. Um, so you're kind of racing the clock. Uh, whereas in tech defense, you're racing humans and the clock. Uh, and so yeah, there's, there's a reflection because uh, if you get that exploit before other people, you get more points because you put in the intelligence to do that, whereas the people who t see you pop the system then take that and uh, pop someone else didn't do as much work. So the scoring system is pretty just. Um, the upcoming events that we're going to have, there's actually something called the NSA Cyber Sprint that's happening right now. Uh, that is a, never, we've never competed in it, don't really know what it is. It's a CTF that once you open their, their link, you get four hours to go ahead and try and complete as much uh, problems as possible. Um, you, uh, if, if you want to work on it as a team, we're going to probably discuss when we uh, are going to open it up in the lab and then we can all sit down and look at it together. Um, so if you want to be part of that, I think we'll discuss that afterwards. Um, also, in the uh, upcoming events, uh, Rue CTF, Russian CTF, uh, it's an attack defense that's happening November 21st that we're going to get ourselves up and running for. And also, ICTF, which we uh, did last year, which was a great time, uh, will be December 4th. And that's actually uh, the Friday of Dead Week for those of you planning your schedules early. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> words of a fellow student. <laughs> yeah, WordPress is a backdoor with the, the blog feature. Um, I'm going to leave this open actually to any questions if you guys have a uh, start. Yeah. So, what are the different types of, so you mentioned that attack and defense are like team based. What are the different roles that people can um, like take on in mm -hmm. a team environment where, like, okay, like I'm going to defend the system where I'm going to be on offense? What are the different roles? Uh, so there's definitely people, quite a few people will be monitoring traffic um, so that you can, uh, that's kind of like reconnaissance, you're going to understand what the other team's doing, you understand uh, what's going on. There's also the role of looking at the source code to try and write an exploit yourself. Um, that's going to be specialized towards people who have, uh, you know, understanding of that, that system. If you know PHP really well, then we're you're probably going to want to be writing an exploit for a PHP uh, program. Um, and then there's going to be uh, some sort of uh, defense, someone who's got to be updating firewall. But at the same time, these roles are kind of, uh, you're going to do more than one at the same time. You're going to maybe monitor traffic, and then you're going to switch over to something else based on what's needed. Yeah, Max? Can I just kind of extend that, which is, um so often you'll see like services and stuff that are saying that say they do something or like you know code that has a comment that's like this code does this. And you're in a CTF, don't believe that for a second. Because that's <laughs> gonna be the stuff that's like like, oh yeah, this takes in a string and then prints it out. Except, oh wait, look, it actually passes that string to like, you know, exec first. And it's like, oh no. <clears throat> There's definitely a difference between like what something appears to be doing and what's actually doing. Very often in a CTF. There's a lot of uh, deception, obviously, in CTFs. And also to keep in mind is there's a human who programmed all of this other stuff. So trying to think about it, how they would have either tried to deceive you or how they were going to write it in the first place is uh, going to be beneficial to doing better in CTFs. Um, other questions? Yeah. So those resources that you showed, is there some like place where we can uh, put those? Also, it's a similar thing. Is some place we put those? Yes. What is the next Jeopardy CTF? Uh, so, multi so a lot of them actually just, just spawned up. Uh, if you look at 
this ctftime.org slash upcoming, it'll tell you all of the, uh, not all of them, but like a lot of the upcoming CTFs. People will post to that, so you can sign up for them, uh, learn, get information about it. It'll also contain where the write-ups are for the previous years. And so if you go on there, it'll show uh, what's coming up for the next calendar year uh, if people have scheduled them. And there's a couple of them. Uh, we'll check that afterwards because it actually just got spawned. Like a couple of them were put up like yesterday. So. Yeah, and if there's any CTFs that like you find as an individual and you really want to participate in, you really want to get a team together, um, and we're not necessarily specifically hosting that CTF, um, we kind of pick and choose different CTFs that we want to host because we have other events going on or whatnot, come talk to me, come talk to Drew, and be like, hey, could you open up the security lab so like four of us can go in there and like work on the CTF? And I'm like, hell yes, we'll do that all the time. Yeah. How many people are normally on a team? Uh, for like, there's like qualification rounds and then there's like final rounds. So qualification, we could all be in a room working on it. Uh, but typically, you know, like five people will end up being like in the, the competition for the final. It's like limited to a certain amount of people, about like five people. So that's common. Jeopardy so that means Yeah. So I know in some CTFs, certain people read the logs. So what are the logs that they're, re they're reading, and why do they read through those logs during CTF? OK, like network logs is like kind of what I'm talking about with monitoring traffic. Um, you're going to monitor the connections people are making to you. Um, people are pinging your system. Um, in the advanced uh, like CTFs for attack defense, they're going like, to send like decoys of like, this looks like it's popping your system. It looks like it logged. like part of the flag, but it, it didn't. So if you read those, you understand how their, how their exploit works. So either you can better defend yourself, or you can um, use their beginning source code to write your own. Like, you can reverse engineer how their um, exploit works. And now you talked about PHP. Are there any other languages that people use? So is there like socket programming involved in that? Yeah. There's uh, all sorts, depending on, like, what the creators, contest holders decide. Uh, PHP is very common. Um, I think I've seen a couple go, but like SQL is a, SQL is something that's usually exploitable. It's usually like put in as a uh, as a problem. Um, Python is a very heavy language, so if you want to know that, that's that's a good one to uh, study up on. Um, the, yeah, there's also C, um, common common languages uh, in general, but there's definitely more. What are you saying, Nick? JavaScript. JavaScript as well. Yeah. Other questions? How many people have participated in the CTF? Oh, sorry. How many people would like to participate in the CTF? Okay, cool. Nice. So, like I said, if you have any suggestions you want us to do, um, and we'll also be hosting them. I think, are we hosting any other Jeopardies this quarter? Uh, at the moment, we only have attack events set up, but definitely can add more to it. Yeah, so Ghost in the Shell Code will be happening like the week we get back from uh, break, I believe, like January 8th, I want to say. Um, and that's, that's a big one to be a part of. So getting your feet wet early is a good thing. Um, more practice, better you get. More fun you have. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm saying it's hard. Yeah. Take pride in accomplishing it. Any, any last questions? Right. Well, thank you for uh, coming out and uh, listening to my talk. Yeah, definitely stop by the lab if you want to like work on these or get help on some of them. Um, love to do them. So, cool.